class we had, I think we started out with around 18, we ended up with uh, 11. A lot of people just dropped out, some couldn't do it. So our class was kind of small in the end, but uh, we had a lot of fun. We started coming in, we had to go up to the third floor, <laughs> all those to for carry all our luggage and stuff. No elevators at that time. But my experience here, <clears throat> I can tell you mainly as a, a student nurse, um, it was a big step going from high school to nursing. Were you from this area? Did you grow up in this area? I, NFA, yeah. Okay. Do you remember what year did you graduate? Do you remember? I, I graduated NFA in 1955 and graduated nursing in 1958. Okay, so you went right into nursing right school into after? Nursing. So that was a big step for me. It was a big wake up call because I grew up real fast. Um, after, after coming from high school and having a carefree time, coming into nursing and being more serious and seeing the other side of life was an eye-opener. I couldn't, I used to come down Holland Road to go to work and I couldn't get here fast enough. It was a great, a great job. Very rewarding. Talking about school, We just had such a good, I feel sorry for people that don't have three-year programs <laughs> because we actually, it was nice. You had a real good support system um, and, you know, we would study together and, and sometimes we'd date the same guys, but, <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, it, it was really a positive experience for me and I was terrified of Miss Miller. I was very shy back then, and uh, she didn't have to do much to have me shaking in my boots. <laughs> when you came in your first year, you had more luggage, and you had to walk up three flights of stairs. <laughs> and, no uh, elevators, huh? No elevators, and we all had a private room. We shared the bathroom and the showers, and uh, it was nice when you weren't used to living with 18 girls. There were 18 in our class. And, we graduated, we only lost two, so we came in with 20 and graduated with 18. When I was in nursing school and people came in for cataracts, after surgery they laid flat with sandbags on the side of their head for two days. We had to feed them, we had to give them bedpans, so oh my things word. have changed. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm going to have mine done in this era. <laughs> well, I started in 1950, graduated in 53. Um, but actually my first uh, introduction to Bacchus Hospital was when I was 12 years old. I was on the pediatric floor for nine months with some hip surgery, the first hip surgery. And Dorothy Miller, who was our president, has passed away now, uh, was a student nurse. And then when I came into training and met Dorothy, she remembered me. Wow. After all those wow. years. We were on the floors, and that was it. And I mean, it was eight hours, and usually evenings or nights, but we still had classes during the day, regardless of whether you were on days or nights <laughs> or evenings. So we spent a lot of time that way. And then the following year, of course, we started the affiliation. And my first affiliation was Norwich Hospital for Psychiatric. And I have a story about it. I would not have made it through training probably if uh, things hadn't worked out. I was working in one of the kitchens and getting things ready, cleaning up after um, one of the things. And I had a whole bag of garbage that had to go out and one of the patients came in and he said, can I help you? And I said, no, I said, I just have this garbage to throw away. And he said, well, I'll take it out for you. And I said, oh, that would be nice. So I walked over and unlocked the door and let him out. Fortunately, he came back. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would not have made it to a dream. I was so frightened when I realized what I had done that he wouldn't come back, but he did. Well, they only gave us very brief vacations. I think we had a week at Christmas and 
week in August, I think yeah. that was all. Because we initially we took, um, we were mostly classroom, a little bit of being on the floor, but then by your senior year, you only had one day of classwork and you were mostly on the units. So we did do a lot of nursing care, which was a tremendous help because you had, when you went to get a job, you had a lot of experience. I gotta believe it wasn't all serious all the time that there must have been a few hijinks going on and uh oh never <laughs> <laughs> well we had ways of uh, sneaking things in and out of the dorms and uh um i think i would remember one uh, a patient who was um she was terminally ill and she wanted to see her children and back in those days children could not you know come in to visit and we got her all you know spruced up as much as we could and her husband snuck the children in through the back stairs so we did do things like that that were against the rules but they always had uh, you know a good um, ultimate end uh, we're all the three of us are from the class of 1968 oh, okay and I'm one of the older ones in the class by about a, a year from some of the others because I went to nursing school in Providence for a few months and didn't have to study much in high school and didn't know how to study once I got to nursing school. So I flunked out and came home and my mother said you can either go to work or you can decide to go to nursing school but you're not going to sit around and hear and mope. So I came and had an interview, I got hired as um, a nurse's, nurse's aide and worked labor and delivery and in the newborn nursery until I started nursing school in the fall. So I was here with, with uh, Ellen and Linda. I always knew that I was going to be a nurse from when I was little, little, yeah. And I was going to say, I remember Miss Parsons who ran the um, the house mother. The house mother, five days a week, and she would be, I remember, it wasn't me, but she'd go behind people, no physical contact, and she'd, <laughs> she had, and she had these shoes that would go click, 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 so everybody knew she was coming, that, um, it was almost like she had bottle caps on the bottom of her shoes, <laughs> and, but it was a totally different, um, and you had to, the first year we had to be in by 10, or nine, nine o'clock every night. And then your second year you got an extra night off so that you could be in like at midnight or something or 11. And then the third year you could, you got two nights besides the weekend. So it was, it was totally different, but it was um, a lot of responsibility in the, on the floors at the hospital and stuff. But really we had good supervision with the, um, our instructors and um, always made sure you knew what you were doing before you did it so you didn't hurt anybody. We had a system uh, back then, the ER wasn't sort of like open all the time, so when they would arrive, they had to ring the bell. Well, they, they would ring the bell and then that would alert somebody up in like administration that there, you know, there was someone in need of emergency services and then people would run down and, and you know, tend to them but there wasn't specifically a nurse assigned and because I was in orthopedics all, all of the nurses in orthopedics would rotate through the ER for lunch but we really weren't like trained for that so you would be there with you know the um, obstetrical patient that's half bleeding to death or the I remember a small child coming in who was comatose he had taken a whole bunch of pills and to the point that he was comatose and so you were just almost like paralyzed hoping that the nurse would come back from lunch because you just were not trained to do that and I think the doctor whoever was in the hospital rendered care so like um, uh, even in the um, orthopedic unit we had someone who passed away in the middle of the night when we were doing our night rotation and it was a OBGYN physician Dr. Edie who came and pronounced him um, and it was just he was the doctor in the hospital so they just all pitched in. The thing with the emergency room it's no big deal but we had to weigh in once a month <laughs> remember that and you go you have your weigh in they had a scale there and they'd keep chart to make sure nobody was gaining too much weight or whatever. And then Jane, I know, had to go every week to weigh in. Really? But, oh yeah, that was... <laughs> what would they do if, like, would you get 
punished? Maybe or? counsel you. I don't know. But wow, we had talk to about Weight Watchers. That's yeah, we had to wait in once a month. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Well, well, that no, be thank God. <laughs> because that, the the uh, school nurse, the, the nurse who oversaw our health, her office, she had a small office right off the emergency room. And we had to walk, we would go, there was a tunnel at the time, now it's above ground, but there was a tunnel from the nursing school to the hospital. And we had to walk through the emergency room in order to get to the cafeteria, in oh. order to get to, you know, to the hospital itself. So we were back and forth several times a day through the ER. Wow. Somebody said before, they, they always knew that they wanted to be a nurse. Is that Didn't have any choice. They started making me nurses' caps when I was three years old. <laughs> because your mother worked here. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Where did you work in the hospital once you, once you came into the hospital? I came into the nursing school, then I went right directly from nursing school to anesthesia school at Dartmouth, and then I came back and worked seven years in anesthesia here, then I went to Wyndham for 37 years in anesthesia. And sometimes they would treat us and have ice cream in the in the freezer for us, or bring over the famous Bacchus brownies. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that well, one we before. Didn't know we have it. Oh, over, yeah, the yeah. Brownies. The Bacchus brownies, they were the most delicious brownies you could ever, ever have. <laughs> were they made at their, in their kitchen? Or? Oh, yes, yeah. So that must have been a special treat to have. Mm hmm, it certainly was. When the doctor came into the unit, well, we used to call them wards. When the doctor came into the unit, you, you stood up and you gathered all his charts, and they were the metal-covered ones. You gathered them all, and you walked along with the doctor with his charts for each patient, and sometimes you had a pretty heavy load <laughs> to carry, right? Mm -hmm. Did you always want to be a nurse? Yes, from the time I had my appendix out when I was about six years old, I was, and at that time, I was in the hospital for two weeks, <laughs> and uh, I I was impressed by the nurses, and I said I want to be a nurse. So, well, you have to really decide today if you want to be a technical support person or you want to be a nurse. A nurse, you've got to relate to your patients. You've got to give them a chance to be a person instead of a number or a bracelet or something like this. And don't be afraid to touch your patient. Hands-on therapy is always the best. I know myself, I did I never did any regular nursing after nursing school. I went right into anesthesia. But my main mission with anesthesia was to give my patient a self uh, a chance to be themselves and to s express themselves. And the most important part for me was always putting a patient to sleep with a smile on their face. Even if it took me making a jerk out of myself to do it and uh, believe me I did <laughs> because I'd like to get my patient laughing and in a good place before they went under and I'd sort of gradually add my medications at that point and if they got to be laughing and having a good time I thought that was the greatest thing I could do plus take care of their vital signs and all the things I was supposed to do but to me relaxing them and making them think, well, you know, maybe this isn't such a terrible experience. Maybe we'll even have some fun, <laughs> which is hard to do when you've got somebody laying there on the table, but that was my mission. Sweet dreams. Right? Yeah. Yeah.